Hey guys, my name is Sydney. I'm an SRNA. I'm going to show you a gas machine check. You're going to have some check offs that you need to do. So I'm going to um, do that for you today. The first thing that I would do is when I walk in, I'm going to look at my machine like I would a patient. The first thing I'm going to come to is the CO2 absorbent. I'm going to make sure that it's not ethyl violet if it's soda lime um, and that they're seated properly, which it looks good. Um, and it's white and I don't see any obvious tunneling. The other thing is there's a spit valve right here. I'm gonna make sure that's closed because that could be a source of leak. I'm gonna come over to my vaporizers. I'm gonna make sure that they're full. If they're not full, these are specific keys for the vaporizers where when you fill it up, the idea is you can't put sevofluorine and desfluorine because the key's not gonna line up. Um, so that's something that I would do before I even do my machine check. Make sure that my vaporizers are full. These are my board on gauges. These board on gauges are for my high pressure system or my e-cylinders. They're reading zero right now, which is perfect. If they didn't read zero, I would flush the system. These are my intermediate pressure board on gauges. Um, the pipeline supply is on right now, so they're reading between 40 and 50 over here, except this one's not on. Um, but usually they're zero if the pipeline supply is off. Right now they're on, so they need to be between 45 and 50 PSI. We're gonna come, oh, before we do that, we need our meta, uh, malignant hyperthermia cart, our code cart, our airway cart, oxygen, um, or suction at the head of the bed. Make sure your auxiliary oxygen works, which we're gonna say it does. Um, Ambu bag, flashlight in case the lights go out. Um, these are things that you probably should verbalize and make sure you have. All right, so I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna check the pipeline supply. Um, oxygen's on. This is called a diameter index safety system. The idea is that the idea, the diameter of oxygen and the diameter of nitrous oxide and the diameter of medical air are all different. Um, there are specific threaded systems, so you hopefully cannot put oxygen where nitrous oxide is and nitrous oxide where oxygen needs to be. So the colors line up and this looks good. We're gonna come to the back of the machine now. Same thing, this is the diameter index safety system. Medical air, nitrous oxide, and oxygen all are lining up appropriately. This is your E-cylinder, it's hanging in a hanger yoke. So the way that I would open this or crack this is I would slowly, and you hear that, and then I would go ahead and close it because we don't wanna use it. All right, so I'm coming to the front. We're gonna make sure that oxygen reads um, at least 1,000 PSI. If it doesn't read over 1,000 PSI, then you need to change the E-cylinder. Same for nitrous oxide, you need 745 PSI, or if it's lower than 745 PSI, three-fourths of the tank is empty, and you need to change your tank. Medical air is a, needs to be over 1,000 PSI as well to show that you have the tank at least half full. If it's less than half full, you need to go ahead and change it. All right, so I'm gonna check for leaks in the low pressure system. I'm gonna make sure that I can occlude this bulb that you would find in the top drawer for 10 seconds, and I'm gonna say that I can. Make sure there's no leaks in the actual bowl. So I'm gonna to connect to the common gas outlet. Again, I'm checking for leaks in the low pressure system by making sure that this bulb stays occluded for 10 seconds. And this is the low pressure system. So now I'm gonna check the interlock system. First, I'm gonna crack this SIVA fluorine and I'm again occlude my uh, suction or my bulb. Cracking the SIVA fluorine, make sure that again, when I introduce a vaporizer into the manifold that there's no leaks in the system. During this time, I'm gonna try my interlock system, which makes sure that I can't open my DES fluorine while my SIVA fluorine is on. I can't do that, so that means my interlock system is working. I'm gonna close my SIVA fluorine, do the same with my DES fluorine, even though the DES doesn't work on this, so we're just not going to, but um, if this does fluorine was over here instead of right beside the other vaporizer, the interlock system wouldn't work and technically you could still turn on um, both gases at the same time. All right, so now we get to turn on the machine. Well, there we go. All right, so now that I've checked the low pressure system, I'm gonna turn on the machine. I'm gonna make sure that these Thorpe tubes don't have any cracks or humidification in them. This is called a bobbin. When I go through the range of motion with my bobbin, I wanna make sure it's spinning, which it is. And the way that you read it is at the top. So this is about eight liters per minute. If it was a ball, you'd read in the middle. 
So I'm gonna go through the range of motion with my medical air, no problems. I'm gonna go through the range of motion with my nitrous oxide and you'll notice that my oxygen comes up in a three to one ratio. This is my hypoxic guard or proportioning system. So that's the other thing that you're actually checking for. Now that you've gone through your complete range of motion with your nitrous oxide, you're gonna do the same with your oxygen. And now you're gonna come down with your oxygen and again, check your hypoxic proportioning system. The idea is that right about here, your nitrous oxide is gonna come down in a three to one fashion as well. This other safety feature of oxygen, in the case of the lights out or you're not really looking over here, it's fluted with eight flutes. So you can feel that this one is the oxygen. All right, so now I'm gonna move on to calibrating my O2 sensor. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is make sure that, well, I don't wanna do that first. All right, that my low O2 alarm works. It's set at 27, it's at 23, so it says that the low O2 is working appropriately. I'm gonna put it back to 21. Alarm settings, oh, I'm sorry, not alarm settings. Set up and calibration. O2 sensor calibration. Once this hits 21%, I'm gonna have the O2 sensor calibrate to 21%. So we're gonna start calibration. During this time, I'm gonna go back to my scavenging system. This purple is my vacuum. I checked when I was checking the diameter index safety system that I was on. On some machines, you'll have a meter right here. And if the ball is floating between the two meters, then your uh, vacuum is appropriately suctioning, not too high or not too low. I'm also looking at the scavenging bag for any uh, obvious holes and to make sure it's not hyper inflated or hypo inflated so it looks pretty good right now. I don't see any cracks or kinks here. During this time, while it's probably still calibrating, which it is, I would turn on my uh, monitor. I would make sure I have an EKG, temperature, blood pressure, SpO2, and um, in title working appropriately. This is the gas sampling line, so I would make sure that I don't see any um, moisture in here or humidification in the deep end, which I don't. I'm also going to go ahead and look at my corrugated tubing, make sure that I don't see any obvious leaks. I don't see any, make sure that all of this is tightened. Everything looks pretty good, no cracks or kinks. All right, so I'm going to reinstall the sensor. We're gonna check the rest of the scavenging system. So make sure that APL is on minimum. All right, now we're gonna occlude our Y piece. And the idea is when I include my Y piece in bag mode, the scavenging system doesn't make this board on gauge read below zero centimeters of water indicating that the vacuum is too high. Now I'm gonna O2 flush. Always say that you are not attached to the patient. And while this bag is inflating, I wanna come over here and make sure that my board on gauge doesn't read over 10 centimeters of water. This indicates uh, that I can't give over a positive pressure of 10 centimeters of water and that I don't need to turn up my vacuum. So that's great. All right, so now I'm going to close my APL or adjustable pressure limiting valve and we're gonna check this breathing system now. When I give an O2 flush, what I wanna make sure is happening is that I'm staying over 30 centimeters of water for 10 seconds. The other hope is that this would read over 90%, so I would be able to give over 90% to my patient. I'm gonna say we're giving so much oxygen that I can't even read. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze this and make sure that I can get a high positive airway pressure. So that all looks really good. Again, we're going to say that it reads over 90% oxygen. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to unclose or I'm going to open the APL. Now I'm going to um, go into ventilator mode. So that means I'm going to switch over like this. I'm going to attach my reservoir bag like an actual lung. And we're gonna say that I like everything except I want my respiratory rate to be 18. My PEEP is gonna stay off. I can give over 90%, which is great. 
I'm gonna O2 flush, I'm not attached to the patient because I just want my bellows to come up. First, we're gonna do this at low flows. We've all been testing at about 0.5 liters per minute. Low flow is less than one liter per minute. What I wanna verbalize is that I'm seeing the bellow descend on inspiration based on this actual gas machine and ascend on expiration. These are called floating unidirectional or check valves. On inspiration, I wanna make sure that the inspirational valve is floating and seated properly on expiration. On expiration, I wanna make sure that the um, expiratory valve uh, goes up and then it seats properly on inspiration. I also wanna make sure that my tidal volume is close to the tidal volume that I actually set. So 595 and 600 within about 50 mils of what you set is fine. And that this, uh, what am I thinking, bellow, whoops. My bellow is going down to about a tidal volume of 600 as well. I'm also making sure on my board on gauge that I'm not breast stacking. The idea of that is that the pressure wouldn't be coming back down to what I would have set my positive and expiratory pressure at, and I'm not having those problems, so that's perfect. You're gonna have to do the same thing at high flows. The things that you're once again looking for uh, is making, making sure that the unidirectional or check valve floats on inspiration and that this check valve floats on expiration that your bellow descends appropriately on inspiration and ascends appropriately on expiration. My tidal volume is within 50 mils of the tidal volume I've set. My board on gauge is telling me that I don't have too much uh, positive end expiratory pressure happening or um, I'm not breast stacking and it's coming down to where my peep is set, which is off, so that's good. All right, so once the bellow is up here. I'm going to detach the reservoir bag, put it back, put the mask on. This is called exercising the breathing circuit. All I'm making sure of is that I don't feel any um, resistance when I feel for the airway pressure. You can feel in a multitude of places, but with COVID, maybe down here. What I wanna verbalize is that I like these vent settings. So we're gonna go ahead and put it on in standby, maybe. All right, there we go. That I have my suction on high at the, the head of the bed, that I have everything I want as far as my um, mask, appropriate stuff to intubate, that I have my AMBU bag, um, that my auxiliary suction works, that my monitor uh, is appropriately turned on. Make sure all your flow meters are off. Make sure both of your vaporizers are off. And then at this time, you'd be ready to um, get your patient. Uh, my name is Sydney, I'm an SRNA. And if there's anything else I can do to help you guys through school, um, go ahead and let me know.